All right, now we're going to hook up the hoses to the regulators, put the regulators on the cylinders, and then the other side of the hose, we're gonna hook up to the back of the rotinator. So the first thing you wanna do is grab one side, and let's start with the fuel. The fuel hose is the red hose, and we wanna grab our propane regulator. It's the one with the red writing on it. And you're gonna notice that there's two little outlets here. This side here with a moving nut on it, that goes to the cylinder. The other one is what your hose threads onto. And this is gonna thread on, all fuel joints are going a counterclockwise motion. So you're gonna put this on here, screwing it in with your fingers, counterclockwise until it's good and tight. Then you're gonna take an 11 16 wrench and just snug it up. Okay, fuel regulator is on. And one point I wanted to make is, this isn't an acetylene oxygen hose. This is a T-grade hose regulated for fuel gases. There is a difference, and it's more of a rigid hose. If you ever happen to use an acetylene hose, after a while it'll get really weak and flimsy and kink on you an awful lot. So it's important to use, with a fuel gas, a fuel regulated hose, and that's what we provide with the equipment. All right, now we're gonna put the oxygen regulator onto the hose. And you're gonna notice that it has two outlets as well. This is what hooks onto the cylinder. And this is what our hose threads on to. So we're gonna tighten that on there. Hand tight and then snug it up with our 11 16 wrench. Okay, now we have both of our regulators on our hose. Before I put these on the cylinders, let's hook the other end of the hose up to the back of the rotinator. So you're gonna pull your safety caps off and it's important to hold onto these because if you ever take your hoses off of the back of the rotinator, you wanna cover these up, both edges of the hose and the back of the rotinator because little uh, insects, spiders can get in there. If they get in there and bring stuff in there, it can clog up the system. So it's important to always keep these covered when they're not hooked up. Okay, so the fuel is the top one. Thread the fuel on. And then we're gonna put the oxygen on. And we're gonna take our 11 16 and tighten them up. Okay, now we've got that end of the hose attached to the rotinator. Now we're gonna take our cylinders and hook them up to the regulators. So let's start with the oxygen. And what you're gonna do here is, you don't want to put these on finger tight and then snug them up with a adjustable wrench. Okay. Now we're going to hook up our propane. Now that we've got everything hooked up, we've got the cylinders of gas, regulators, hose, and back of the rotinator. Now that everything's hooked up, we're ready to set our fuel mixture and then get out and use this thing. All right, we're gonna set our gas mixture right now. And it's important to keep in mind that when we set this gas mixture up, you wanna maintain the same mixture for every animal that you're using on your property. The amount of gas you put into a different tunnel system may vary depending on the species, but the mixture of fuel, you're going to keep consistent on every animal you're going after. All right, so we've got a propane tank, we've got an oxygen tank, and we need to turn these on and set our pressures on the regulators. And we need to be setting these pressures as gas is flowing through the system. So it's a, a constant pressure with the gas moving. There's only one adjustment that you need to make on the rotinator. On the back of the rotinator, there is a fuel metering screw on the back of the gas release valve. There's a little hole here and you can look through it and see a little brass set screw in there. So what you're gonna wanna do is take a small little screwdriver and turn it clockwise to close it. And then you're gonna wanna crack it open between an eighth and a quarter of a turn. We're at about 2,000 foot elevation here. And elevation does have some variation on your fuel mixture. So we're gonna set it at just over an eighth of a turn open, okay? 
So let's turn our propane tank on. And you always want to turn your tanks on slowly. You don't want to just whip them open. And it can create, a, if it's a full tank, it can really create a lot of pressure against your regulator and possibly damage it. So slowly turn on your propane and open your tank all the way up. Now, you can look and see that this gauge right here gives you the volume, volume in your cylinder. This gauge right here gives you the outgoing pressure, the pressure that you're wanting to set this at. So we're gonna set our pressures at 30 and 30. Both regulators on both gases are gonna be set the same. So we're gonna set this at 30 pounds. And to, set, to get this to 30 pounds, this is your adjustment right here. And you're going to turn this in a clockwise motion. So we're turning it up. And when we get up right by 30, what we're gonna to wanna to do is let the gas flow through it so we can fine tune it right at 30. So there we go, we're at 30. So our ox propane is set, we're done with that. Now we're going to adjust our oxygen. So we wanna slowly turn on the oxygen. And we wanna set this at 30 pounds as well. So I'm turning this up to 30. All right, so we have 30 pounds on this tank, 30 pounds on this tank of outgoing pressure. Now we're gonna test fire it. I've got some earplugs here. And what you wanna keep in mind is starting with a small amount of propane with a metering screw, you're gonna give it a little, little, little flow and then hit your igniter button. If it doesn't ignite, you wanna turn that propane up just a little bit. So I'm gonna put some earphones on right here so I don't hurt my ears. Okay, with just a little bit over an eighth open, give it a little gas and test fire it. That sounds great. So, I am set up to go out and use this. What I need to do now is I need to shut my tanks off. Okay, shut them both completely off. And this is the same thing you wanna follow at the end of the day when you're done. Shut your tanks off, but you don't wanna keep pressure built up in your line, so all you need to do is just hit your gas valve here and that will bleed. Oh, you know what? This is where that check valve clicked in because I forgot to set my ball valve. <laughs> this right here, you can see that the check valve has been activated. So I pull that back, reclick it, and bleed the lines. Now, see, that's exactly how that works. Okay, you can see the pressure dropped on here. Now what you can do is unhook this Put your tanks on some type of portable device. We have a trailer that I'm gonna be showing you in a minute. But you wanna make sure that whatever you have, your tanks are solidly mounted. Your propane needs to be standing up. The oxygen can be leaning over, but you wanna make sure they're solidly attached to something so that the bottles won't roll and your regulators won't be damaged. Now we're all set up, let's go have some fun. All right, we are out in the field now. We've got our gases set to where we want them. One thing I didn't cover in the earlier video is, is where you want to set your fuels. I told you to set them at 30. That's kind of for a test. When you're dealing with closed animal tunnel systems like pocket gophers and moles, you want to drop your regulars down to about 15 and 15, as long as they're at equal pressures, because it's an enclosed tunnel system and you don't want to rush the gas in there. So on closed hole tunnel systems, you want to set your regulars at about 15 and 15 open hole tunnel systems like ground squirrels and prairie dogs set at 30 and 30. You, they've got opening connecting holes to it so you can rush the gas in there a little bit more. So now that we're out in the field, I've got my gas mixture set where they need to be. I'm hooked up, I've got an R1 here. I've got an R3 on the back of uh, the Rodinator assault cart here. As you can see, this is a great way to, to carry all of your equipment around the tanks. The cart does not come with the cylinders of gas or the hose reel, but it's set up to hold them. We've got, if you've got an R2 or an R3, we've got a, an attachment back here that holds, holds the device in place. Very convenient to keep everything nice and tight. So with everything in place, we now take our gopher shovel out, open up some gopher holes, and get to work. Okay, on these 